All right, what's going on, you guys? JT here, back with Nate Bauer, Nate Bauer Fitness. Make sure to go check out his channel for tons of videos on combinations, training, and all that. I'm gonna leave a link in the video description below. Today we're gonna break down something that you don't hear much about on YouTube, although some channels have covered it. Uh, UMA Fight Camp, if you go over there, you can see that Safe Carmen covers it over there. And we're gonna cover a few things on the cross arm guard. One thing that's very important to know about any type of defense or guard is that you're always gonna feel uncomfortable in it until you've practiced it, until you've mastered how each of the components are supposed to work with offense and with countering. If you're gonna play with this guard, just like you're gonna play with the Philly Shell or the Peekaboo, it's something you're gonna get more experience with as you use it, as you try it. And you're gonna make mistakes and that's okay. The main purpose of the cross arm guard is to shut down everything coming through. You have to be, you don't have to be as active or as mobile. You can sort of shut down that center line. It does come with some vulnerabilities around the body and other things that you have to get used to. Let's get into it and we're gonna break it down right now. All right, the main thing with the cross arm guard is that you're shutting down straight punches coming at the center and you have to adapt to other shots coming at you. So you do have to move, just like when you have sort of a normal boxer's guard, you have to turn the punches out, you have to cover for the hooks. Just like here, when you're in the Philly shell, you still have to block, like so, turn the shoulder. Everything does have an arm motion. With the cross arm guard, my hand is generally in the way of most shots. I will have to engage or parry the shots to sort of absorb them. I will have to raise my elbow to block the hook or raise my hand here to block the hook. If shots are coming to the body, I will have to close and sometimes use the other arm to get a little support. So there are small motions. But anyways, let's go through it. First, Nate is just gonna throw the jab. All I'm gonna do is try to stuff it and try to stop it. So here we go. Now, I'm gonna put the hand down, he goes slowly, jab, boom, he's going right for me. So these shots are coming right through. Here he goes again. He moves back here, working me again. And I'm trying to see how I can kind of close distance with that. I can kind of shut down those straight shots. He's throwing, if I wanna be a pressure fighter, then I can come through like that. That's a start off with the jab. There isn't much you have to do. Now let's say he's gonna throw the one, two. It's the same thing, but I have two beats. Boom, boom. I wanna meet him with firmness. Otherwise, if I don't, and he goes, let's say one, two, he goes boom, and I don't meet him with firmness, then I'm gonna hit myself in the face. So I do wanna have that hand firm. I can also turn my body a bit to give me a little bit more absorption on the shot. So let's just take a look at the one, two. He goes one, two. Now see, even if he's getting through, they're deflecting down. It's going below my face, as long as I have this here at this level. He goes again. And if I want, I can also play out here. See, I really got it. And I can play out here, okay, to really cover. Because what happens is, as my hand is out there, the angle, I'm cutting down the angle, just like a goalie coming out of the net. In soccer, as my hand is out further, I'm cutting down the available options to come through. So this cross arm guard is a great guard to stop straight shots coming through. I know what most of you are thinking is what we're all thinking, the body does feel kind of open. And this is where you have to use that lower hand. So let's say he throws jab and then he goes right hook to the body. I have to get that elbow down there. I have to be able to read that. I have to be able to bring this hand back here. Jab, right hook to the body. He goes right through, pop up, pop up. And then let's say he comes on the other side with a hook. I have to be ready to, to dip and use that hand here, right? So this, it's almost still like in the Philly shell. You still have to use the elbow and the arm to cover. So he goes jab, hook, hook, right? I still have to be able to work and move. I still have to be able to read the punches. Mainly I'm using this to apply pressure to shut down everything up the middle but I still gotta be reactive to the other side. If he wants to jab to the top of my head, I might have to be a little bit active with my head movement, unless my hand is up here. So that's the other factor. If he jabs to the top of my head, it's open, right, just from being here. So I do have to be aware of that and be a bit active. If he jabs, if he's not jabbing low, if he's jabbing high, I either have to get that hand up there or I'm gonna have to move my head 
to adjust to that. One of the beauties is defending the left hook or the lead hook. It's going to feel a little bit weird at first because in order to defend the lead hook, you have to get your chin below your elbow. Partly raise the elbow and have that chin down. So let's say he goes right hand lead hook, right hand lead hook. This is where I have to have it, right here, this elbow blocking. This can also be a deterrent because they don't want to get an elbow into the knuckles or into the wrist. So let's say he goes slowly, and if you're working with a partner, I would do the hook slowly because you don't want to injure your partner with the elbow. He goes right hand lead hook, boom. Right hand lead hook, right hand lead hook. Another option is instead of turning the elbow here, what you do is you block and then you raise the hand up above your eyes. It's going to be a little bit uncomfortable because for that split second your vision will be blocked as the hand goes up, but this angle will automatically block the hook for you. So let's say he goes right hand lead hook, and here I just raise the hand. Right hand lead hook, right here. Right hand lead hook, boom, like so. Last one I want to cover before one more thing is the overhand right. The overhand right, you have to turn your body. You can also use this elbow up if you know what's coming. He goes jab overhand right, here. This is the defense, so you do have to get used to that turn to cover all angles. Jab overhand right, and then let's say he throws the lead hook, I have to adapt. This is the hard thing about any type of active defense, is motion, motion, motion. Jab overhand right, lead hook. It's a lot of motion, you're going to have to get used to it. Jab overhand right, right here, okay? So you have to get used to those motions. Gonna, let's break it down one more time slowly. I, I stuff the jab, overhand right, I turn here, and the elbow comes up to block the shot. So this defense is very good for just shutting down the middle. The targets are not there. The targets aren't there. They have to work to get to the targets. But you're going to feel a little bit open. You're going to feel a little bit like sort of, sort of you're not covered. Unlike here, you do feel with the elbows in, you feel very protected. One other small aspect to this defense that I want you to know. Let's say Nate comes here. If I get into the inside with this defense, because my forearms are out, I'm already engaged from a further distance than if I'm here. See here. And if he goes to punch, I'm already kind of on top of him with elbows. He has to work. See, I'm here. Right? So one thing about the cross-arm guard, you'll see some of the old-time uh, fighters use this, is that they actually use the cross-arm guard once they get on the inside. Because let's say he starts throwing, boom, boom, and then here I can sort of engage and rough up my partner, my opponent, with the elbows, with the cross-arm guard. This gives you a little bit more contact range. Another factor just went on the inside, Nate steps in a bit. This sort of gauge right here, you're really aggressive with these forms, these elbows. This can be a bit intimidating for somebody who's not used to it, especially if you're in the amateurs and it's legal. You punch and boom and you go like so. These elbows in this sort of frame is not something that your uh, opponents or partner are used to as opposed to this. So right here, you can boom, boom and use that to work from. So this is a nice guard not to solely rely on, but to mix up and to play with and really to kind of experiment with. So one more time, let's say Nate just throws the jab. Here, look, I've, he's working it. I'm just shutting it down. See, I'm just shutting it down by covering that space. He throws the one, two. One, two. Let's say he goes one, two to the body. See, the hand is already there. I just have to make small motions. One, two. But I have to get good at reading it. One, two. Then he comes up for the hook. Easy on the hook. Boom, I got to get that elbow up. Boom. Or I can bring the hand up. See, that just covers it. So there are small motions. If he's going to the body with the hook, let's say jab right hook to the body. Boom, I have to get down. I have to get that elbow in there. Jab right hook to the body. Jab, right hook, lead hook to the body. Boom. I still have to turn and be able to work and get my hands in the way and in position. All right, you guys, the cross arm guard. Take a look right here. My chin is covered. Everything is covered. You see the openings down here? You'd have to work, and then I'd have to adjust. Lead hook right here. This is sort of a guard that I'd say just play with it. Just have a little bit of fun. You're working here, you're working here every now and then. Just for a little bit, just try that and see how it works. The beauty often is being able to switch and mix it up and keep your opponent guessing. So the main reason for this is to be able to shut down offense coming up the middle. You get an opponent who's throwing a lot of jabs, straight shots, being able to close distance, 
boom, so that you can fire from there. An excellent alternative, something that you can also try to apply pressure. Thanks for watching, you guys. Peace.